this is cut years ago. You can see it from here, but back, back is, I think, there is a fence about halfway. This is north going to Springfield. And you can see all the trees? They're all gone now. The road is dirt and would be that way for a few many years. Okay.
cover story was a printing shop. The coal had to be carried up the stairs. There's a lady still alive that worked out there. It has been mostly the building that you can see here was mostly a grocery store. Chad Auto Parts was there later. My dad worked in that store. He had a store, and you know, I don't know which whether it was this one or the one across the street where AJ's is. Okay. This is up front of that same building, and you can see it there. However, where the um, iron steps are is the um, fire escape. They are now adding on another portion of that building. The uh, Howell State Bank occupied the left-hand side of it at the grocery store at the right. The, right. the small building that you can see is the frame post office. And the man who had the back room, Mr. Senate, had the catalogs which the post office could not deliver on the one wall that you can see because of the robbers trying to rob the bank would shoot at him when he shot at them to scare them off. And they did. They even took the safe out of it one night, took it over in the park, blew it up. <laughs> this is Route 4 and uh, Walmart Street. The road where the lady is walking is Route 4. You see there's not a lot of weeds. AJ's is still there. You can see ice cream that uh, was a drugstore, a restaurant, an ice cream parlor. Uh, and that goes on down the street. On the other side, you can notice the wagon there. Uh, on the other side, none of those buildings that are visible are still there. The first one was an ice cream store. One of the buildings which I can see is the barbershop. And the later Way down beyond the uh, pools is the lumber yard. This is AJ's door. And you can see that building has changed quite a bit. I've been trying to get them to put the uh, porch back a lot. A lot that you still get on there. And you can find any ways with that. Next to it is what they are now calling the Webster Building. At one time, the first door was the post office. I remember it mostly as a confectionery, which is a glorified name for an ice cream bar. My mother and the uh, lady that sold tickets at the inn early would go over there most afternoons and have a <coughs> nice coat. And I still like my orange hat. Okay. This is general store. It says Billman, I think, on it. Uh, next <coughs> place is Dr. Bradley's, and he had a nurse store. Dr. Bradley is the gentleman in the dark clothing. Um, and again, you can see, it doesn't like dirt. It looks like dirt. It's more like weeds, grassy weeds to me. But um, the what? The one gentleman is uh, a Whitney and the other one is an Earl Snow, both names that were well for you know, in chess. You notice the two steps up to the uh, store and the <coughs>
south end of the doorman store. And there was a connecting door with just a little tiny lock there that you could go back and forth. Maybe get real nice when you ran out. Okay. This is Mike Eboy's uh, barber shop. And that is now here a fair. Hair works is the name of it. Those two double doors and the two windows. I grew up in the house just to the west of it. And it, it was something growing up uptown in those days. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks. <laughs> and they always congregated on Saturday nights across from our house. And um, it was interesting. If you wanted something here to move, you waited until they got gone. And then they moved it. Uh, one man is Eloy. He had uh, three sons and um, two daughters. The three sons were all barbers, of course. They, and they were all barbers, and the one daughter was a musician. So uh, it's interesting to me that that still has a hair affair. His uh, son is beside him. The other gentleman is his brother. And Johnny had one half of one of his feet cut off by the train. So, you know, those are the stupid things that you would have. Okay. This is Frank Kirschman's livery stable. And I cannot identify any of the persons in it. Later, Ed Hedrick is the one that I remember had the barn. Uh, he had racehorses. And the trainers would train them out here. Now, this is Ed Hedrick's barn, and that's what probably you would remember. The upstairs was the first apartment that I can remember, and it was rented out. It had hardwood floors. Or again, why would you remember the hardwood floor? But, uh, <laughs> Later, Ed Henry took his racehorses into the fairgrounds. During the summer, they made the circuit of all the town fairs. This is Glory's Market. It was Uncle Tommy's, as far as I was concerned. He was no relation. Uncle Tommy is the gentleman on your right. Uh, his brother, Bill, and Billy Crass. Uh, notice the hats on a wire across the, the ceiling. Uncle Tommy butchered all of his own meat down on pool pack. And I, the other day we were talking and nothing is left of that. Not even the foundation, I think. The hides he stored in a barn beside his house, which was right next door. And they put salt between each of the hides. Well, that's nice. but, uh, of course, we live right across the street, so we went to store at least to have a dozen times a day. In those days, you didn't pay for your groceries. You had a little ticket book. And every time you went in, they wrote down what you got, the date, and the price. Then when you got paid, you went in and paid your bill. If you couldn't pay all of it, you paid what you could. And um, when you paid your bill, the kids got a sack of groceries, a sack of a sack of candy. So that was always, you know, a big thing. During the Depression, people in Chatham would have gone hungry if they hadn't been in the town for it. But, um, his uh, sister kept house for him, and um, she never knew what she was going to fix for dinner. When it got time to get dinner, or even lunch, she went into the store and Uncle Tommy gave her 20 more. And um, I know one time I was helping over there and we and I told her corn. So they said, just go get what you want. It was a funeral dinner, was what it was. And so I got a hand of whole kernel corn. Well, they didn't like it. They liked the big stuff. So I found that out right and quick, even if it wasn't a funeral dinner. This is Joe Nevis. 
that spot is to Old Chatham. It was right across from the cemetery behind the, uh, uh, was the Lutheran Church, it's now the VFW. But he delivered oil and gas to the farmers. They still had that. Well, that was the only way they got it. They did not have the wheat crops like they have now. <coughs> this is a, a view of the business district starting with the Caldwell Bank and the restaurant and on to AJ's. At one time besides AJ's, there was an old hotel, and I cannot find any pictures of it. And EJ Andrews for the uh, where Collegiate is now. He had a grocery store in the next building where the tavern is was antiques with a shoe repair behind it and where Fat Willie's is now was anything. Uh, they had shows there later. It was a ice cream parlor, a juice factory, and then of course Uncle Tommy's Market, which is the Chatham Auto Parts now. And that, basically, that whole building is just like it was on the top okay. This is the DNA uh, Depot, which the village has restored. You see the open doors. That's what they restored. That's the baggage. And it blows my mind because, to me, what they should have restored was the waiting room. That's what we remember. The benches, the old cast iron stove that heated it, um, the double windows is the ticket office. It is basically the same. I have an original ticket from that, and I've forgotten whether it's going to Springfield or coming to. The section through there got to where they were going to work by a hand car. It had two, I don't know what you call it, uh, things that you pump by hand, and that's how they got. It was not motorized by any I haven't figured out what the gentleman is there on the right. In fact, I couldn't see him good until we got this slide up. Um, the trick operator, and why they called him that, I will never know, is the gentleman uh, with the hat there. He received, sent, and delivered telegrams. Uh, if he couldn't get out into the country, then he would send it to the post office, and they would deliver it. Well, but when did it cost to go to Springfield? Uh, probably 30 cents. Mm -hmm. Was that routine when people work in uh, Springfield and sleep in Chatham? Oh, yes. Yeah. So they would take the train in there and back and forth? Well, no, they did that on the traction. Uh, the CNA did not run that often. It went around 10 o'clock in the morning and came home around 3 in the afternoon. But on the traction, then you can do that. What's the traction? The traction was the um, ITS, Elmo Terminal. They also called it the Inurban. Yeah, the Inurban. Yeah, the Inurban. Uh, they told that you could get off work at noon, get on the traction, go home, eat lunch, take the traction back to Springfield, and be at your desk in an hour. We used to take the traction to St. Louis. They get also delivered the newspapers out of line and also the register in the afternoon. And I'm going to call it. Um, pretty quick, you need to finish up pretty quick before yeah, we have okay, time to question. This is one of the very stable. There are some uh, Arabic tracks in front of it. They're not really uh, <coughs> too well. But the people would um, leave their horses here. And that is about where the post office sits now. That's the greenhouse in that hill. That's the old elevator where some of you can remember being uh, torn down. Uh, the ramp is where the horses and buggies went up to drop the grain. I, I worked for that elevator for years. Okay. There, there's the same in greenhouse. 
which um, there was another, it had three different uh, rented houses, the small one there, this is the middle one, and there was another one on the other side. It sat behind the shatters. So, and that's where you brought all your plants, the flowers, and the wooden from seat. Okay, that's it.